UFC Vegas 59. These are the full card predictions and the betting breakdown main event. Jamal Hill versus Tiago Santos. We're going to talk about each of the matchups on the card. Make sure you guys smash that like button. If you're new, subscribe to the channel. Turn those post notifications on and share the video as well. Let's jump right into things. First matchup, Myro Bueno Silva and Stephanie Ager. I'm picking Myro Bueno Silva to win this fight. I think the Muay Thai striking is a quality difference maker. Her physical strength, she should be able to, for the most part, keep Egger away from her. And even if they are clinching up, I think Bueno Silva's uh, strength inside of the clinch positions should allow her to be fairly safe with the difficult, difficult judoka, Stephanie Egger. There are going to probably be throws that land. I don't see... It's easy for Egger to transition to an arm bar and land a submission on Bueno Silva. She's very dangerous on the mat. Egger is tricky to deal with with that judo style. But I think Bueno Silva striking is going to make Egger pay a lot as she tries to close distance. Because you look at Bueno Silva's stand-up game, it's power. She is throwing near 100% in each of her strikes. And if they land, they do damage. Egger with more of an upright striking style. She'll work low kicks and straight punches to get inside and use the judo in close. Bueno Silva, to me, is the pick. I think she's going to look good on the feet. I think her jiu-jitsu is very capable of fending off the judo of Egger. I think the takedown defense, for the most part, should be there. I don't think it'll be easy for Egger to throw Bueno Silva. Not saying it doesn't happen. I could definitely see Egger landing a couple throughout the fight. But I think Bueno Silva does more damage, winning the fight on the cards. I'm picking Myra Bueno Silva to win a decision. And a big part of it's definitely going to be she's nasty striking, and she can do some damage on the feet where Egger can't do the same to her striking. Minus 134, Egger plus 135. I'm riding Bueno Silva. We'll bank on her takedown defense, her grappling defense overall, and her dangerous stand-up game, which I think is going to definitely uh, mess with Stephanie Egger on the feet. I think she'll touch her up and do a bit of damage. I don't think she gets the finish, though. Like, as I said, decision win, Myra Bueno Silva over Stephanie Egger to start the night off. Next fight of the night. Corey McKenna and Miranda Granger. Guys, I'm picking Miranda Granger, but I don't like it as the pick. Like, technically speaking, McKenna's the better fighter, but look at the physicality difference. 5'3 to 5'7. 58 and a half inch reach to 68. That's serious. Granger is athletic and awkward with her stand-up game at times, but she still is a pretty physically strong girl. She's capable in grappling positions. McKenna does have good body lock takedowns. She's got a decent striking game too, but she's so outmatched in the range department. Especially, you look at McKenna too. She's a big favorite. What is her line sitting at? She's sitting at minus 200 best value. Granger plus 202. I like Miranda Granger to win. I think she's going to take this fight on the cards in a sloppy and competitive matchup. Granger lacks technical striking abilities. She's awkward with her hands. Sometimes I feel like the head leads before the hands go. But reach is a factor. It's going to be hard for McKenna to get in close. I think that Granger's going to, I don't want to say out-muscle McKenna. I think that McKenna will probably land a couple takedowns throughout this fight. I at least see it personally. But Granger should be able to be competitive in a lot of the positions. Out-pointer in a competitive fight. Like I'm thinking this is maybe even a split decision. It's a dog or pass style bet. There's no way you're throwing down on McKenna as a large favorite. Uh, I know McKenna's last fight was against Elise Reed, and you know some people thought she would have could have won the fight. And then prior to that, she fought Kay Hansen. Thought she kind of lost that fight, gets a decision. I'm riding Miranda Granger to upset Corey McKenna here. It's ugly odds. It's not a fight that I'm like suggesting you go throw money down on. It's not one that I'm super excited about. I think it could be pretty sloppy action. I'm concerned at how it's going to look. But I'm riding Miranda Granger to get her hand raised, even with the awkward stand-up game, even though I don't like it. I like the bouncy striking of McKenna Moore. But 5'3 with a 58.5-inch reach, that's an atom weight stature. 58.5-inch reach is so short. She's outmatched by the reach so much that I think the athleticism of Granger, she's still going to be able to land punches here and take it on the cards. Win by decision for Miranda Granger over Corey McKenna is the official pick. Next fight of the night, Jason Witt versus Josh Quinlan. Knockout puncher Josh Quinlan. I'm banking on him getting the KO. Jason Witt is a wrestler. Pressure forward style, wants to fight on the mat. He's going to look for takedowns. He cannot compete striking with Quinlan. With striking game is subpar, but also he's known to be pretty fucking chinny. The durability is low. 
Knockout lost to Sato quickly. Knockout lost to Selmersberger quickly. And then Phil Rowe stopped him in the last one. I think Josh Quinlan adds a KO win to his resume with this one. I love the boxing game that he has. His stand-up overall, he keeps his hands pretty tight. He throws powerful punches. He's got good hooks. He has actually uh, pretty good footwork as well. I like the way he cuts off the cage and he'll constantly be switching stances, not in a karate-esque style, more in your traditionalist kickboxing or power MMA boxing striking stance. I think Jason Witt's definitely going to look to wrestle. Quinlan may be forced against the cage a bit. Even if Witt lands a takedown, Quinlan's going to be live throughout. I think he finds ways up, and I think when they start striking, Quinlan has the ultimate difference maker, which is the serious KO power that is going to annihilate Jason Witt. I'm going first round knockout for Josh Quinlan over Jason Witt. Looking at the lines, Quinlan is a fair size favorite at minus 215. Jason Witt, the plus 193 dog. I like Quinlan by knockout. I'm picking him in the first round. I do believe the hands get it done. You can't be picking Jason Witt with much confidence, man. He's a stiff striker. Yes, he's got good wrestling, but he's chinny. Multiple knockout losses in the UFC, and I think Quinlan adds to it. Win by KO for Josh Quinlan in this fight. I like the power striking, and he also has a solid jab and a good overhand shot. And that shot, I believe, lands on the chin, and also that lead hook, too. I just see him touching up Jason Witt standing. <clears throat> Next fight of the night, Takashi Sato and Brian Battle, ultimate fighter winner. Brian Battle decides he's going to drop to welterweight. He's a pretty tall guy for welterweight, 6'1", 77-inch reach. I'm picking Brian Battle to win. But Takashi Sato, he's not an easy fight. I mean, he's a powerful striker with a judo background. He fights out of the southpaw stance. He's got a really big straight left. We've seen him taken down and controlled a bit against superior grapplers on the floor. Brian Battle has a pretty decent wrestling game. Uh, but I like the kickboxing for him. He's got solid volume and movement. He's pretty light on his feet. Good kicks. A lot of kicks from Brian Battle. Sato threatens with a power left hand and threatens with a bit of judo. But I don't see him being super dangerous for Brian. Uh, Battle is fought up at middleweight taking shots from Treshawn Gore. I know Treshawn hasn't done well in the UFC. But I would bank on the fact that he's probably a harder puncher than Takashi Sato down a weight class at 170. Assuming the weight cut... Is fine for battle. I expect him to be throwing combination strikes, consistently moving, trying to grapple a bit, maybe even grinding on Takashi Sato against the cage. And I'm picking Brian Battle to win by a unanimous decision over Takashi here. Looking at the line, Sato plus 198 is a dog. Brian Battle minus 225 is the favorite. I will say this. I think the line's inflated due to the fact Brian Battle is the ultimate fighter winner. But he is the rightful favorite. And I do believe he gets the hand raised over Takashi Sato in his welterweight debut. But we'll have to look at the scales closely because Brian Battle deciding, hey, I'm going to drop this weight class in the UFC. Let's find out. I'm banking on him, though. I think Brian Battle looks good and uh, gets his first win in the welterweight division. Next fight of the night, Terrence McKinney versus Eric Gonzalez. McKinney is back after the great fight with Drew Dober, which he ultimately lost, and then Drew Dober looked good this past weekend beating Rafael Alves. So uh, I feel like McKinney's stock maybe only rises there because he had Drew in serious trouble in the first minute of that fight, first 10 seconds. It's picked. T-Rex, Terrence McKinney. He's the pick all day. Eric Gonzalez is not a bad fighter. I mean, he had Jim Miller pretty hurt in that last one. He does have pretty decent hands. He's a scrappy kickboxer uh, with a decent wrestling base who will let the hands fly, who will bang inside with the pressure forward style. But he's fighting Terrence McKinney, one of the fastest starters in the UFC. Southpaw, who's extremely explosive. Dynamite puncher. Also has dangerous knees. Very good kicks. But he's a KO or bust guy. It's first round knockout really for McKinney or bust. I think Terrence McKinney gets Gonzalez out of there in the first two minutes. I think it's a destruction, one-sided beating, and I think Terrence McKinney's stock continues to rise. Even though he hit the Drew Dober bump on the road, Drew Dober is one of the toughest guys in the fucking weight class to deal with. And Terrence McKinney nearly had him out of there, but ultimately blew the wad. I think he stops Eric Gonzalez here in a round. Lines for this one, McKinney minus 850. Gonzalez plus 610. There ain't no bet on this one. Minus 850. We'll see what the KO prop looks like as it drops. But Terrence McKinney should run over Eric Gonzalez here. Next fight. Featured prelim. Michael Olak Jaychuk versus Sam Alvey. I'm picking Michael Olak Jaychuk. 
I think it's a good move for him to drop down a weight class to middleweight. I've always felt he was an undersized light heavyweight. And looking at his most recent loss, it's aged really well. He gave Dustin Jacoby a difficult fight. Was able to go the full three rounds with him. Sam Alvey somehow is still in the UFC after an atrocious run. Last one, Brendan Allen gets him out of there. He decides to drop back down to middleweight. I think that's worse for Sam Alvey. I think Michael Oleg Jaychuk is going to look good down at middleweight. I think this is going to be an improved look for him. I think his hands are going to be on fire. I like his striking. I actually think Oleg Jaychuk is that awkward trickiness because he's a loopy puncher who fights out of the southpaw stance, has knockout power in his hands, pretty good hook to straight combo um, from southpaw. I think that'll be a factor. He moves his head well, and he can wrestle too. Sam Alvey is always known for being unorthodox. He has power. He hits pretty hard bit stiff in the stand-up decent hooks takes a lot of damage fun southpaw versus southpaw fight too i'm curious to see how that plays out but i think oleg j chuck is going to find a lot of success in this matchup and i think he's going to probably beat the hell out of sam alvey i'm riding with oleg j chuck to ko him in the second round probably hurts him against the cage and then follows up with some ground and pound i don't think there's much of a shot for sam alvey here i actually feel like i'm surprised to see that he hasn't gotten his walking papers yet Ultimately, he fights Michael Oleg Jaychuk, and he's an insane underdog. Sam Alvey, plus 455. Oleg Jaychuk, plus 450. Or excuse me, minus 450. <clears throat> the line's insane here. Michael Oleg Jaychuk is going to beat him. He's going to take him out in the second round. I think he might even take him down too and wrestle a bit. Oleg Jaychuk against Dustin Jacoby to me, as I said, it aged really well. And I mean, he was on a two-fight win streak. The Bowskis fight close, but destroyed Gamzatov, broke him. Oleg Jaychuk at 185, I'm excited to see it. I think it's the right move for his career. He should run over Sam Alvey and knock him out in one or two rounds. Not close. Smiling Sam, sweet guy, but not, not his time here. Not his time here. I think his time has passed. Let's jump to the main card if you guys haven't yet make sure to smash that like button and if you're new subscribe arian lipsky versus priscilla cachuera i think this could be fight of the night i'm gonna be picking the queen of violence arian lipsky i don't feel like priscilla won that fight against jinyu kim the last one out but she ultimately got the decision and she always brings the entertainment value i mean you're never bored with a fight between priscilla cachuera or arian lipsky to be honest with you both girls bring forward pressure Thai esh style of striking. I think Lipsky is a little bit more versatile, has better combination strikes, but Cachuera has tricky flurries in close range with the hooks and brings that brawl heavy style with those wide shots that she'll land. She likes to make fights fun and she likes to bang. Ariane Lipsky will engage her in a brawl, though I wouldn't be surprised if Lipsky actually gets this fight to the floor a bit to try to stifle the stand up of Cachuera, make her think about more things than just standing up because Cachuera is extremely comfortable in pure stand up fights. To me, it's Arian Lipsky on the cards, winning a decision, but it should be a pretty action-packed fight, to be honest with you guys. Looking at the lines, Lipsky minus 159, Cachuera plus 147. I'm picking Lipsky. I think Cachuera is still game, and I mean, she stands upright. She comes in with forward pressure. She's willing to eat a lot of shots to land them, which, as I said, it makes for fun fights. Lipsky, the queen of violence, will engage her in a bit of a brawl, and I, I think Lipsky... Gets the hand raised, but I, I feel like I got to respect Cachuera's durability. I think she's going the full three, and I think Lipsky's taking her out by a decision here. Let's jump to the next one. Augusto Sakai, Sergey Spivak. Listen, guys, I'm picking Augusto Sakai. I know he's on a three-fight losing streak and hasn't looked good, but look at the losses for Sakai. Knockout against Overeem, fair. Knockout against Rosenstreich, fair. Knockout against Tai Tuivasa, fair. Sergey Spivak is not a dangerous striker at all. He doesn't bring knockout power. He's pretty mid-tier on the stand-up. Is he going to take Augusto Sakai down and just destroy him on the floor? I have a hard time seeing that. I'm not saying Spivak couldn't land takedowns and have a bit of success on the mat. But I personally don't see him beating up Sakai on the ground. I think that Sakai's defense is going to be there. He's going to outweigh Sergey Spivak. And Sakai's not a bad grappler in his own right. He's not great. He's okay. He's got decent takedown defense. The cage work. He'll be able to fend off the attacks from Spivak. Standing up, that Brazilian tie style from Sakai. I mean, he had a lot of success against Alistair Overeem. 
I'm riding Sakai to win. I'm thinking, though, Sakai takes it on the cards and wins a decision. Looking at the odds between these two, Sakai plus 180 is the dog. Spivak minus 195 is the favorite. I think it's what we've seen lately from Augusto Sakai hasn't been good. I will totally agree to that. It's 100% accurate. He's looked shitty as of late. But stylistic matchups play a huge part without punching power. Spivak, he don't have it. He needs to fight on the floor. I think Sakai's going to look decent standing up. I think he's going to be able to fight in a competitive matchup. Maybe even surprise Spivak with Sakai's grappling strength. And I pick Sakai winning on the cards. I don't know if he gets the knockout over Spivak. I got to respect Spivak's game a bit there. But I like the underdog, Augusto Sakai, to get the win. And I think the, uh, the lines are wrong in this one. I think it's just what we've seen lately. As I said, it's been shit from Sakai. Taking on Spivak, though, I think he's going to look better. The stand-up will be there. He doesn't have a threat of a power puncher across from him. It's a grappler, somebody that wants him on his back, and I think Sakai will fend off the takedown attempts well. Win for Augusto Sakai. Next fight is the Ultimate Fighter Flyweight Finale. It is Juliana Miller versus Brogdon Walker. Man... I got to pick Juliana Miller. Her grappling skills look extremely legit to me right now. From the show, I was very impressed. Now, it's going to be hard to submit Brogdon. She went distance with Aaron Blanchfield, who's a very dangerous grappler. Granted, I think Juliana might have a slicker sub game. I kind of see Juliana having success on the ground with positional control. Beating Brogdon up a bit, shooting for submissions. Maybe gets one. But I'm not high on it because Brogdon hasn't been finished as of yet. And I think Juliana Miller at 2-1 and one is looking really good as a pro now. I mean, ultimate fighter fights don't count on the official record. But she is 4-1 and one now. And that one loss was avenged on the show. Walker, she has a pretty decent low southpaw stance where it helps her defend takedowns fairly well. Good pressure style. Keeps opponents at bay. Granted, recent win on the ultimate fighter was against the replacement. It's not enough to tell me she beats Juliana Miller. I'm impressed by Juliana's game. Not a lot of pro experience, but a lot of ability. 10th Planet Girl as well, so you know that ground game is going to be solid. I see the fight hitting the floor at some point. Juliana Miller has excellent back control. I can see her control in the back of Brogdon Walker for extended periods of time. Maybe a submission. Definitely not impossible, but I'll pick Juliana Miller. Leaning it decision, but maybe you're playing that sub prop. We'll see what it looks like when it drops. Lines are extremely close. Minus 130 for Miller. Plus 110 for Brogdon Walker near Pickham's fight. And I'm riding Juliana Miller to become the ultimate fighter. And we'll see what she can do at just 26, 125 pounds. It's a fairly open weight class. I'm excited to see uh, how the run in the UFC looks. And I think she beats the 33-year-old Brogdon Walker here and gets herself the UFC six-figure contract. Juliana Miller for the win. Next fight. Zach Pauga versus Mohamed Usman. Yes, the brother of Kamaru. I actually like Mohamed Usman. He seems like a good dude. But I'm picking Zach Pauga to win. The Ripper. Zach the Ripper should stop Usman, man. The biggest thing that is concerning, and this is a consistent issue, I feel like, with the Ultimate Fighter. For years, light heavyweights go on the show, don't cut weight, and then beat heavyweights. Mohamed Usman, yes, he's a powerful fighter. He hits fairly hard, but he's not nearly as mobile standing as Zach. Zach the Ripper is going to rip shots in him. I like the way he kickboxes and manages distance. He has very good footwork. Not a ton of pro experience, right? I mean, if you include the tough fights, he's just 7-0. and Granted, it's not like Usman has much more. He'd be 9-2, and including the tough fights. But you look at performances, Zach, to me, was much more impressive. Usman, the win... I believe it was against uh, Eduardo. Let me let me double check the names here. I don't want to give you the wrong. Yeah, Eduardo Perez. That split decision, really close. Zach Paul got, got a clean knockout. I like Zach to win. I think the hands will be on fire. Usman, I just think he's a little bit too raw. Obviously, he's the brother of Kamaru, so they'd love to have him in the UFC. You know, market him a bit, sell him. Getting a win here would be good for him. But I just don't see him faring well against these top-line heavyweights. And he's fighting a light heavyweight in Zach Paulga, who I think is going to knock him out. Second round. I'm going Zach Pauga win second round knockout. Usman looping puncher. Pauga much more precise, accurate, getting to the fucking target. We're riding with him by KO in round two. And I think he touches Usman up and beats him, man. Unfortunate for uh, 
the Usman family here. Pauga minus 230. Mohamed Usman plus 195. It's just hard for me to see Usman finding that distance and getting inside. Like, I watch Usman fight and there's hesitancies. There's just... I don't want to say he lacks. He lacks precision. He'll throw heavy punches, but they'll be way out of range. The fight IQ, I don't want to say it's suspect, but it needs work. And Zach Pauga just seems to be ahead as far as the stand-up. And I don't think Usman's going to have the wrestling to control Pauga on the ground. Pauga win, second round KO, and new ultimate fighter. Let's get to the co-main event of the evening. Vicente Luque versus Jeff Neal. I'm picking Vicente Luque to win, but it's not an easy fight. Jeff Neal is definitely a tricky matchup for pretty much like most strikers inside of the UFC. I think Vicente Luque from the kickboxing range has a bit of a accuracy advantage. I think he's got better low kicks. I think he's more dangerous with the shots that he lands. Though, I think Jeff Neal is more explosive, but Luque does a better job of getting to the target. Neal does have finishing ability in his hands and his feet. Granted, he more so has done it on the lower tier competition level when it's gotten to the big dogs in the rankings. He hasn't had that same level of success. Both guys took bad losses to Wonderboy. I feel like Vicente Luque also has the X factor, which is the jiu-jitsu skill set, where he could lock up a submission on the mat if it did go there. I think he could catch Neil in something. As I said, Luque, though, good low kicks, cuts off the cage well, stance switches, good pressure style, pretty dangerous. I like the powerful punches. I like his stance, the way he controls range, the way he'll cut off the cage. I think Jeff Neal's going to be fairly competitive though i don't think he's completely destroyed here but i think a decision win for vicente luque is pretty likely here and i expect him to pick apart the legs a lot of jeff neal also limit that explosiveness that neal brings luque minus 164 as the favorite jeff neal plus 152 as the dog i am riding vicente luque to win i'm picking him on the cards win by decision he's looking to bounce back after a tough fight against Bilal very different stylistic matchup Jeff Neal to Bilal Muhammad you got striker versus striker here and I think this is where Luque shines but Neal won't make it easy still gets his hand raised Vicente Luque for the win main event of the evening Tiago Santos and Jamal Hill I have to pick Jamal Hill but method of victory It's quite cloudy to me. I'm going to bank on third round knockout. But let me say this. Tiago Santos has been proven durable. Yes, he's got a lot of losses. Four out of his last five have been losses. All decisions. Goes the five rounds against Ankalaev. John Jones. I mean, this guy has fought a who's who. Lost to Glover. Lost to Rakic. Kind of a lackluster win against Johnny Walker. I wouldn't be surprised if Jamal Hill ends up winning a decision because Tiago Santos at this point has such low output. It's just disappointing. I really believe it's from the knee injuries he sustained in the Jones fight. It just stifled the explosiveness of Santos. And then you have Jamal Hill, who's a tricky southpaw, who's got quick boxing. He's pretty smooth with the stand-up. Nice straight shots. Knockout power. I think if somebody's going to KO Tiago Santos at 205 pounds, it's probably going to be Jamal Hill. I think he finds some clean strikes, touches up the chin of Tiago at some point, and I think he's going to get his hand raised by KO. But I wouldn't be surprised if it goes to full three. Tiago Santos has a good Muay Thai style, still has very good low kicks, heavy shots, power punches, big looping shots that he'll throw. But I'm telling you, man, he has a hard time closing that gap these days. I see him... Moore is an extremely durable guy that can last against top-level competition but not necessarily win these big fights. Jamal Hill, devastating knockout in the last one over uh, Johnny Walker. Prior to that, takes on a legit Jimmy Crute, KOs him. The stand-up has looked unreal from Jamal Hill. I don't see Tiago Santos catching him in some odd submission on the ground like Paul Craig did and snapping his arm. We'll ride Jamal Hill to find the knockout shot. If it goes to full five... I still think Hill takes it on the cards, but I really feel like he's going to find a straight punch that lands right on the dome of Santos and puts him down. Looking at the lines here for this one, Jamal Hill is a minus 247 favorite, so he's a large favorite. Santos plus 225 is a dog. The reason I think the lines are this wide is Tiago Santos' lack of offensive output at this point. He genuinely can't close the gap like he once did and i truly believe it's because of the knee injuries it's just stifled his game jamal hill moves so much better he's a lot smoother with the boxing at this point i think he's gonna touch up tiago santos and get his hand raised jamal hill i'm saying third round knockout too and with a win 
Jamal Hill jumps into contendership. I mean, maybe a fight against Volkan Uzdemir is even on the horizon for him uh, because this is a huge spot to be in. Overall, UFC Vegas 59, pretty decent card. Fun to see the Ultimate Fighter finale as well. Some solid names throughout it. I hope you guys enjoyed the breakdown. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of the picks. Do you agree with them? Do you disagree? And if you don't have anything to say, please enjoy the content. Drop a W in the chat. As always, much love to everybody for tuning into the show. Make sure you smash that like button. If you're new, subscribe. Turn those post notifications on and share the video too. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. We're closing in on that 10,000 subs, so I'm super excited for it. Keep it locked in on the channel all week. I'll be dropping content pretty much every day. Exciting fight companion on fight day as well uh, coming on Saturday, so make sure to tune into that. But keep it locked in right here at MMA Experts. Much love, my people. Thank you all so much for tuning in, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace, everybody, and have a great one.